Okay, well, thank you for coming the, uh, this afternoon in relation to our, our topic for the today. I'd like to talk to you about the uh, decision of the Queensland Police Service in relation to the lowering of speed tolerance levels. Commissioner Stewart uh, spoke of this some months ago in June, and uh, we've implemented that strategy since then. So uh, we've continued with that strategy, and as part of Commissioner Stewart's initial outline, we've always intended that there would be a, a series of adjustments of the speed tolerance and commencing on the 20th of September, we will move to the second uh, adjustment in relation to speed tolerance levels. So that will take effect uh, tomorrow. And uh, we're asking members of the community, particularly road users, to be mindful of the issue of speed, to comply with speed restrictions as they are posted, uh, and to con continually monitor their speed to ensure that they are driving according to the conditions that prevail, not just the speed limit that is, uh, that is signed. The speed limit that is signed is the maximum allowable speed limit for that designated area. That's a decision that's been made as a result of assessments by road engineers and the road network. And the important thing is for motorists to comply with the speed limits as they apply to the area they are driving and also to the conditions in which they are driving. I'd be happy to take any questions you might have. Yes, uh, this, this adjustment of speed tolerances will apply to the whole range of speed restrictions across the state. And can you say how significant the lowering is? No jurisdiction in Australia publicises the tolerance levels, but we are adjusting the levels according to the schedule that we had decided upon. And does it lower them in the 60k now? I was only had noticed you get more, a lot more motorists mm. on speed. Well, it's interesting in terms of the adjustment that's occurred to date. We have seen some evidence that people have listened to the Commissioner's message in terms of adjusting their speeds. In the first uh, month of the adjustment, we saw about a 2% in July increase in speed detections, and in August we've seen about a 23% increase in speed detections. It's important to note, though, that during that period, radar units have been deployed more often, and uh, the hours upon which they operate have also increased, and also that some locations have uh, radar units applied to them that did not apply previously. So we're encouraged by what we've seen in terms of people complying with the initial tolerance adjustment, but we're now moving to the next level of tolerance adjustment. Does the statistics show any indication that this is working in terms of lowering fatalities? Well, the fatality rate today is 201. 201 people on Queensland roads have lost their lives. That's a tragic situation and one which we ask people to take notice of. To date, we have six more fatalities than we had to the same stage last year. But interestingly, we're 20 or so more than we had in 2010, which was our best year for many years. One loss of life is a, loss, a life lost too many. One traffic crash where someone is seriously injured is a traffic crash too many. We know from the evidence available from academic institutions like CARS-Q that traffic crash data indicates that people who speed increase their risk of serious traffic crash and serious injury or death exponentially according to the increase in speed over the limit. So we're asking people to monitor their speed, to stick to the signed speed limits and to drive according to the conditions which are prevalent at the time. This could be seen as um, getting uh, Queensland speed camera operations ready for outsourcing, making it more attractive to a private operated company? This has got nothing to do with uh, outsourcing of speed cameras. This has got to do with saving lives of Queenslanders and visitors to this state as they use our road network. What we're trying to do is to encourage people to drive to the speed limits and, and to apply their own safety every day. Statistics do show that there has been a significant drop in the number of speed related fatalities. It seems like something like 25% in the last five years. Well, speed, uh, speed is an important factor in all uh, situations where, where we monitor speed. It's also very important in a vast majority of traffic crashes. We know it's a contributing factor of one of the fatal five in many, many crashes that occur. So the quickest way to avoid that, the easiest way to avoid the complication of speed is to drive to the speed limit. Why shouldn't people see this as revenue raising? Well, it's not revenue raising. It's about saving lives. It's about encouraging people to con contribute to road safety. We're not interested in the revenue that's raised by this. What we're interested in is, is protecting people, road users, pedestrians, 
individuals who are innocent parties to traffic crashes. We're about protecting them and saving lives and reducing road trauma. So prior to the lowering of tolerance margins, were you getting um, more detections or fewer detections? What we're seeing is that as a result of the, the change in tolerances, we've seen about a 2% increase in the month of July compared to July 2012. We've seen about a 23% increase in August compared to August 2012. But what we're also seeing is that for the number of cars that are going through speed detection locations, that we're actually seeing an increase in the number of vehicles that go through compared to the number of detections that are occurring. So the increase is attributable to the amount of deployment of radar units and the hours upon which they're operating. When we compare it to the amount of vehicles that are travelling through speed camera locations, more vehicles are travelling through the locations for every detection. Well, this has nothing to do with the, the uh, program which is reviewing the camera detector defences program. This is about saving people's lives and protecting people from injury through traffic crash. And how, is that an, an indefinite change, lowering the tolerance? It's, it's, th this is the second stage of the process that we embarked on in June through the Commissioner's announcement and his engagement with the community asking people to, to manage their speed. There will be additional adjustments over time to this tolerance level. So we're at a second stage, we expect there will be more tolerance adjustments into the future. But you would never go backwards? At this stage we don't see that happening. What we do know is where major interventions have occurred in terms of road safety over a long period of time in Australia and internationally, you can impact on traffic crash data. Uh, we're hoping that this will be another in the series of major interventions which will enhance road safety in this state and improve the lives of Queensland people. Well, fatalities overall are not falling. We're 206 fatalities as of today. Uh, sorry, 201 fatalities of today, six more than we were at last year. 2010 was our best year in terms of fatalities for many years. Speeding is a major contributor to traffic crash uh, incidents, uh, and this is a strategy focusing on speeding. There are other strategies focusing on other elements of the Fatal Five. Major initiatives in terms of random breath testing as a, as a strategy are underway across this state at the moment. We also have strategies about task force models where we're focusing on other types of uh, behaviour on the roads. We ask people to be mindful of all of the strategies, the five strategies in the Fatal Five. This particular initiative is aimed at one of those strategies, which is speeding. So motorists shouldn't think it's okay just to creep over the limit a little bit? What we know from the evidence available from the Cars Q website, from the fact sheet that they have for relating to speeding, uh, an independent academic institution highly regarded worldwide is that an, a, a small increase in speed has an incremental risk to you in terms of your safety, the safety of your passengers and other people in the car. So we're asking people to comply with the speed limit, not a little bit over the speed limit but with the speed limit. We know that when a crash occurs and the, the evidence is available from Cars Q that the risks of injury come from hitting an object, from the person in the vehicle hitting something else in the vehicle or from their organs within their body uh, moving around within their body as a result of the impact. So there are three things that contribute to that risk of injury. Those, those risks reduce if you reduce your speed. And what do you think of the submissions to the um, government speed limit review that show 52% of people think speed limit should be increased? Well I've noticed the media coverage on that this morning and it's interesting to note that it's uh, 50 odd percent of the respondents. I'm, I'm not sure what the total respondents are or what the total respondents are in comparison to licensed road users in Queensland. So I would take the view that it's uh, reflective of the respondents, whether it's reflective of the entire motoring community, that's for those to judge that are using that, uh, that research. But uh, I have noticed that the government has made ministerial statements and policy statements in relation to reviewing roads in this state, and we encourage that and we will support that as best we can. No matter what the signed speed limit ends up at on any particular road, we're asking people to comply with that speed limit because it will be assessed, assessed through an, an academic and uh, scientific process to evaluate what the appropriate speed limit is for that section of road. 
Well, those are matters for others who are experts in, in deciding what the speed limit should be on a road. But uh, certainly some respondents in that survey have indicated that they think the road speed limit should be changed. That's a matter for those people running that project to decide.